Hi guys, Steve Girardi here. Welcome to Steve Strings. I contacted the folks at Koa Kalani in Hawaii and asked them to send me an instrument to review, and they did. So let's slide in. Alrighty. There we go. All right, so you can see here that the instrument comes in a gig bag with the, uh, the Koa Kalane uh, logo there, silk screened onto the bag. And it looks like it has a basic zippered bag here. It does not look like it is a padded bag. No, it's just, oh, it is padded, okay. It is padded, very good. Also, I can see this bag has one shoulder strap, all right? and a, a basic webbing handle to it. And then we'll take the instrument out, but we'll finish looking here at the bag before we look closely at the instrument. All right. And again, you can see that the bag is padded, not very thickly, maybe five, probably five millimeters worth of padding to it. So it's a basic gig bag, not a, a really thick one. But this is the instrument. And I'm really excited to share this with you because from looking at the website, and I'll leave a link to their website below, you can see that this is a, a solid acacia instrument. And this is their soprano version. So let's go ahead and go over it here. Okay, so first you can see that this headstock, it has their inlaid uh, Koa Kalane uh, logo in it, done in like a mother of pearl. And from looking at that, that looks very neat. And also from looking at this, you can see there is a veneer of this acacia on the headstock. Uh, but the headstock and neck and heel are all one piece of wood. Typically an instrumental seed will have a, a joint here at the heel and a joint here at the neck where they've done a scarf joint to angle the neck. In this instrument, that is not the case. This is one solid piece of mahogany. All right, so these tuning machines on this just look like basic kind of tuning machines, open gear tuners, nothing too fancy going on there. Uh, the nomenclature for this describes it has a bone nut and a bone saddle. And I can see the saddle is not a compensated saddle. All right, from looking at the fretboard here, all right, you can see that it has these inlaid uh, dot markers on the player's side, I'm sorry, on the face of it, and it also has some position markers here on the player's side. But interestingly, there's only one position marker on the player's side. So yeah, there's just one position marker on the player's side, and that is at the seventh fret. That's interesting. And let's see, so it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 frets to the body, which is typical. Alrighty. Also, you can see here, it has an interesting little shaped uh, bridge there to it. And it is not a tie bar bridge. It's a type where you tie a knot in the strings and sort of tuck it in that little slot there. You can also see from this that it has this inlaid mother of pearl, these three Hawaiian turtles. Right. And from feeling this, I can see that it is a rounded edge. This is not a sharp edge. That is very nice. All right. And the wood grain, you can see it has a bit of a stripe going on there on that acacia, which is quite nice. A little more flaming going on on the side. And there's the back. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so from looking at the back, I can see that in keeping with typical um, solid instruments, you can see it does have the seam going down the side where the two pieces of wood were uh, put together. And this does look to be book matched. And on the uh, soundboard, the same. You can see this is a book matched piece of wood. From looking in the inside here, and I'm not sure if you can see that. You can see the, the Koa Kalane logo there on the inside. Okay, from looking inside this, I can see it does have 
Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so it has, you probably can't see this, but it does have notched kerfing going on. And the bracing you can see is not just a typical straight brace that is then angled to the side, but it has an arch to it. Right in the middle, it has an arch and then it slopes away. And so it's thickest right in the very middle and then slopes away. And you can see it does have, I'm not sure if you can see that, but inside along the seam, they also have some little pieces of wood that are glued in there for extra support. All right, so I'm looking this over and from first glance here, I'm looking for any scratches or finish flaws and I cannot see any on the face of it. Um, the sides, I should say this does not come with strap buttons, which is fine because a lot of people don't really use straps anyway. Okay, so from looking this over, I can see no finish flaws anywhere. This is really nicely done. Also, the nomenclature from this in the uh, on their webpage says that this is a, a, a French polished finish, which means it's all hand hand polished. Wow. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, bring this up to pitch and we'll give you a sound sample. I've now brought this instrument up to pitch and I've had a chance to look this over more closely. And I should say that I brought it to pitch and then started playing it. And I've been playing this for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> this sounds nice. Let me go ahead and go over a few more details I noticed while I was uh, going over this. Um, you see here on the headstock, it, it doesn't have those cheap little plastic sort of washers that some instrument has. These look like they, they are like metal little inserts. They look really nice. Also, I didn't mention that this thing has no sharp edges at all, and there's a really good reason for that. If you look at this, you can see that the fretboard and frets are chamfered. That is to say, they're not perpendicular to the floor, they are angled. Um, and so that is just as smooth as can be and is really comfortable. Again, this fretboard is acacia, as is the, the body as well. I checked the string action on this instrument using my little string action guide. And at the 12th fret, this is 0.9, 0.9 um, inches and which is two millimeters. Double check that. Yeah, it's two millimeters at the 12th fret. And I checked um, all the way up the fretboard. There's no string buzz anywhere. This thing is really well set up. Yeah, again, I brought this up to pitch and I've been just playing this and playing this and there's a real good reason why and I'll let you hear it. This thing has a bark. It is loud. Good sustain. And again, I'm feeling that ringing right into the neck. So let's go ahead and uh, listen to it. For a small instrument, this has a big voice.
Now I usually play either a tenor or a uh, baritone ukulele, so this soprano size, I'm feeling a little more cramped than I, I'm used to. But this is louder than any of the other instruments. Yeah, this is definitely louder than any other instruments that I have probably uh, played before. Alrighty, so for a, uh, a soprano instrument, uh, this has a big voice. <laughs> I think you heard me say that. Like I said, I think it's telling that after I tune this up, I could not put this thing down for 20 minutes. Um, it has a nice sound, just a really nice sound. The workmanship on this is really nice. So I'm thinking that if you are thinking of moving up from maybe a starter ukulele you had that was maybe a laminate and you like a soprano ukulele, uh, I think this is selling right now for $113 as advertised on their web page and uh, that is a good price for an all solid wood instrument with beautiful workmanship. I should say for full disclosure, Koa Kalane sent this to me for review so I did not purchase this but I'm not bashful about pointing out warts when I see them and I don't see any on this instrument. I hope you found today's unboxing and review video useful. Um, I have seen some reviews of some other Koa Kalani instruments, and I was curious to see one for myself, what they are like. And this one here um, met all my expectations and more. If you found this review video useful, please give a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of the videos I do, including unboxings, reviews, and instruments that I build, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.